you go to TSMC N65, physical verification. Um, all the files that you need to, all the, um, sorry, directories that you need to reference to will be found on this page for uh, the 65 nanometer library. So the rule file is the one that ends in caliber.drc. So I'm going to select this, copy. Now, for your DRC run directory, you um, basically want to have one folder that is going to be your run directory for DRC, LVS, and parasitic extraction, and you can use it for all of your libraries. And then that way, it kind of uh, you won't blow up your cadence folder. So my particular one is this is this ICFB underscore baseband is my cadence directory. I basically created a folder called Caliber inside of it, and uh, I would suggest you do the same. Just have a Caliber folder inside of your cadence directory, and then that's what you'll set for this line for all of uh, all of your DRCs, LVSs, and whatnot. Inputs you can leave alone. Uh, same with outputs. For run control, what you can do to speed things up a little bit is uh, you can run Caliber in multi-threaded and what that'll do is that'll actually use up all the cores for uh, when running this thing. So you run the DRC and you don't have to worry about this dialog box that comes up. You can even put don't show again and OK it. Then you wait for the DRC to run. So once the DRC has finished running, you should see uh, two dialog boxes pop up. The first is a DRC summary report, and the other is the RVE. Now, getting these kinds of errors, check m2.dn, these are density errors, and these are expected, and uh, you can actually ignore these. If you get only density errors, that actually means you pass DRC. If you get other kinds of errors like minimum area or minimum spacing is off, that means that you did something incorrect. So then you'd have to go back into encounter and apply the fixes there and then restream in and then repeat this whole process. Um, if you do get all these or if you only get these DN errors then you're good to go and you're basically done with DRC. You can move on to LBS. And again, if you're um, once you close this, they're going to ask if you'd like to save your settings to a run set file. If you have not saved a particular run set, you should definitely do that so you don't have to keep pasting in the DRC rules and inputting your run directory. So I already have mine saved, so I'm going to click no. But you should definitely do that if you haven't done so. So before we run LVS, we actually have to do a little setup. You go into Caliber, Setup, Netlist Export. Then on the Netlist Export, we need to paste something into this Include File line. And what we paste in, if you go back to the uh, wiki, there is a line right here that says, before running LVS, Caliber Setup Netlist Export, and you want to paste in this particular line. So we're going to copy and paste that over. And then you can start up LVS by Caliber Run LVS. Again, same thing, you have a run set file. Um, I'm going to assume that you have no run set, we'll, so we'll start from the beginning. So just like with the uh, DRC, we need to put in the LVS rules. You can go to the wiki and obtain That should and it should end in caliber.lvs. And then also for the LVS run directory, I'm going to change it to my caliber directory. Now for the input. Um, for the input, you leave this layout tab alone. And you what you want to do is you want to go to the net list. So the LVS basically compares the layout versus the schematic. Now we see that we have the layout right here, but there is no schematic. So um, what we would compare it to then is actually uh, a Verilog netlist. 
So this should be the netlist you saved at the end of the encounter flow. So I'm going to browse to that particular one for this block. So then you, uh, whatever Verilog file you saved, um, you would reference that. And then, again, if you haven't done that, if you go back to your encounter, it's design, save, netlist. And then where, wherever you save this is what you want to reference in this LVS step. So this is a Verilog file, so we want to change the format from Spice to Verilog, and then we can run the LVS. One thing you definitely need to have unchecked is this, Export from Schematic Viewer. Um, you'd only click this if you actually had a schematic view right here. If you click that box, that will compare the layout to a schematic view. In this case, the schematic view doesn't exist, so we don't have this right here. But if you ever did want to compare it to schematic view in here, this is the box you want to check. So inputs, that's what you would put in. Outputs leave alone. And run control, again, use multi-threaded just to make it a little faster. So I'm going to run the LVS. Now, when we're running the LVS for this one, there actually is a specific uh, way, to do, way to do this. Um, if you're comparing the layout to the uh, Verilog netlist, it actually uh, does not finish. So you should have errors saying something like this, like no matching subcircuit. So our workaround to this is actually as follows. You need to go into your, uh, your cadence run directory. And you can do that in your file browser. So for me, it's ICFB baseband caliber. And then what you need to do is find the top cell name. Of your block. So my top cell name is usart reconfig underscore FFT. And then the file you're looking for should be a spice file. So you start reconfig FFT.sp. So you want to open that guy up. I'm going to move him off to the side. And you need to paste in um, this include line in order to work around this, uh, this error right here. So if you go into my directory, WMFC Helix Project Basefan MFAM. I actually have a file called Spice Include Script. So if you open that up, these are the include lines that you would put in in order to basically work around this issue. Now, this particular block, the USART block, is a regular VT, so I would actually paste in this line. If you're using, uh, if you're working on a block that's low VT, then you'd paste in this top line right here that ends in TCBN 65G plus LVT. All right. So once you've pasted this include line over, you'll save it, and then what you have to do is, if you go back to your Caliber LVS, go back to the Inputs tab. Now for the netlist, uh, we originally have referencing this uh, Verilog file that you saved. What you would do now is you go to your um, your file, your spice file that you just edited. So that was in ICFB baseband for me, caliber, and I'm looking now for usart reconfig.sp.